President Muhammadu Buhari attends Jumat prayer. Chief Justice of Nigeria sets up 13-member Committee on Reform of the Nation's Judiciary. Promise kept, family of quintuplets receive brand new house from the federal government. And on that cherry note, we'll welcome you to tonight's News at Nine. Thanks for joining us. My name is Phil Obano. President Muhammadu Buhari this Friday joined other Muslims to observe the congregational Jumat prayers, thereby putting to rest the negative impression in some quarters regarding his health status. Status correspondent Adam Usambu reports. President Muhammadu Buhari walked the nearly 200 meter stretch from his official residence to the mosque where he joined other Muslim Ummah to observe the Jumaat prayers. <laughs> The chief imam, Abdul Wahid Abu Bakr Suleiman, who presided, prayed Allah never to allow the hearts of the ummah be disturbed by the trials of life and open his doors of blessings to them and the nation. Special prayers were also offered to Allah to be gracious and merciful to President Muhammad Buhari and much more merciful to Nigerians who believe in him so that the task of sanitizing and rebuilding Nigeria for public good can be achieved. Some members of the Federal Executive Council and the legislature attended the prayers. Actually, I observed Zuma prayer with Mr. Frederick and I'm really very impressed because he self sincerely improved. He stayed around, he greeted everybody, but we are even exchanging jokes. So, I, as far as I'm concerned, he's really improving. And I'm sure in a couple of weeks, he will be better off. He came out by himself. He didn't come out on a stretcher. He prayed like any other person. He finished until the prayers are completed. So he looks quite strong. So I think uh, all the speculation now should be laid first. But I uh, hope Nigerians will learn and try to pray for their leaders. This is the first time in two weeks President Muhammadu Buhari attended the Jumad prayers in the State House Mosque. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has underscored the importance of religious tolerance and freedom of worship saying the current administration remains firmly committed to these principles. Professor Oshibaju made the remark at the Golden Jubilee celebration of the St. Augustine's Major Seminary, Jos. Paul Dama has the report. And Yemi Oshibaju was accompanied by the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Solomon Dalong, as well as Governor Simon Lalong and his counterparts from Sokoto, Aminu Tamboa, and Talaba, Darius Ishaku. They proceeded to the St. Augustine Major Seminary in Jos, venue of the event, to join the multitude of Catholics and well-wishers to celebrate an institution famous for teaching sound moral and intellectual doctrines for Catholic priests. Vice President Yemi Oshin Bajo said the occasion is one that deserves the attention of the entire nation, stressing that citizens must practice their faith with emphasis on sacrifice and forgiveness. The President has expressed his firm views on freedom of worship and also the responsibilities of the state to the people and to all religions. Governor Lalong and the Taraba State Governor, who represented the Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Audu Ogwe, the chairman of the occasion, acknowledged the significant role of the Catholic Church in not only molding great personalities within and outside the church, but its role at providing educational and healthcare facilities and also rural developments. It is a very true which ministers are thoroughly prepared to holistically address the spiritual and physical well-being of Nigerians in the Catholic Church. Wherever you see a Catholic Church, you are almost likely to see an educational institution attached to it and a healthcare delivery center. In a welcome address, Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Matthew Kuka, noted that government and the society at large must acknowledge the contributions of the Catholic Church and urge the government to protect adherents of all religions by not putting one above the other. One critical freedom that every government must try to protect is the liberty of citizens to exercise their respective faiths, whether they are Christians or Muslims and others. 
since its establishment 50 years ago, St. Augustine's Major Seminary has produced 1,455 priests, of which 20 became bishops and two were made archbishops, while it currently has 437 seminarians. In Joss, Paul Dama, NTA News. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoin, has set up a committee on the reform of the nation's judiciary. Inaugurating the committee, the Chief Justice said the administrative structure of the nation's judiciary needs an urgent rejuvenation. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewo completes the story. The 13 member steering committee on the reforms of the judiciary is headed by the Secretary of the Federal Judicial Service Committee, Haji Abil Kisu Bashir. Other members were selected from the Supreme Court, the National Judicial Council, Court of Appeal, Federal High Court, the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, and the courts of the Federal Capital Territory. Justice Walter Onogen said the committee is expected to take a holistic review of the operational and administrative setup of the nation's judiciary and identify challenges inhibiting effective performance. I must remind you of the impact of this exercise in the future of the judiciary and urge you to give it all the commitment you can muster. The recommendations that will result from these committees will have far reaching results that we all can be proud of. Chairman of the committee promised to deliver on the terms of reference. We promise to do our very, very best. If such committee has ever been formed for all the years I've served in the commission. It's the first of its kind. The committee has one month from the date of inauguration to submit its report. In Abuja, Femi Okeowu, NT News. Nigeria's government has signed an agreement with Brazil to make her benefit more from the More Food International Program of Brazil. Under the program, Nigeria will benefit from agricultural loans facility for mechanization, processing and livestock production. Minister of Agriculture Aldo Ube signed the agreement on behalf of the federal government. Musa Babaliu has the details. <coughs> Nigeria wants to use the support from Brazil to scale up her agricultural activities in order to boost food productivity, expand economic growth, and boost household income. The Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ugui, requested the support of the Brazilian government through its More Food International Program to execute what he terms as more ambitious program that will anticipate adding about 120,000 tractors and other heavy-duty equipment into Nigeria agriculture sector per annum in the next five to eight years. We need machinery, we need, we need knowledge transfer, we need research. So we have to build our extension services, we have to improve our seed research, we have to train more people in agricultural extension. The Brazilian government promised to carry Nigeria along in the new model of the program that will allow private sector participation the importance that Nigeria tem, and we know the importance of this program that, uh, for Nigeria, and also uh, we understand our place as, a, uh, as a, an example for Nigeria in what regards uh, the culture. So the, you change your work every three four years. The president apex of Brazil is to lead a delegation of agricultural investors to Nigeria. This form part of discussion between Nigerian delegation and the president in Brazilia. We need more power in Brazil, not just at, uh, at the Ministry of Agriculture, but other areas so that Brazil and Nigeria will continue with that excellent relationship that has started a long time ago. Currently, only four African countries are participating in the More Food International Program of the Brazilian government. But Nigeria will be the first to benefit from the new model of the program. From Brasilia, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And back home, a non-governmental organization with the support of the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development says it is creating a six-model platform that will take thousands of youths off the streets. The initiator, National Youth Talent Hunt for Peace and Security, Mr. Prosper Kafo, stated this in Abuja while briefing the media on supporting government in tackling insecurity and corruption in the country. Edino Justice has the details. Youth population is said to represent a country's future and its productive force 
we should be well managed. Linking unmanaged population to unemployment, hunger, to how it could degenerate to other vices, such as armed robbery, kidnapping, and advanced free fall. Prosper Kaffo says the six domains of the talent hunt are designed to assist the youth to be creative and self-reliant. If we engage our youths and they have that sense of belonging and they have something they are looking up to, to go and do on daily basis, you find out that naturally security issues and challenges will start dropping. This particular organization wants to promote peace, security among the youth. And you know that you know, the youth they are the, the ones that are being recruited all over the place to cause mayhem. So when we see a non-government organizations that you know, want, to promote, you know, want to do that, we give them maximum support. Like the organizer said, there are links between youth, peace, and security. If they are well handled, you have peace. But if mismanaged, you have insecurity. In Abuja, Edina Justice, NTA News. And the Senate is to work with state houses of assembly on issues relating to child adoption with a view to employing baby factories. Senate President Bukala Saraki stated this when he received a delegation of the Southeast Professional Women Association of Nigeria and Diaspora. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Ziyan reports. Senate President Bukala Saraki expressed concern over the increasing number of vulnerable young women being sold into sex slavery. A reiterated commitment of the Senate to passing laws that will prohibit such trafficking. Most of the adoption laws are done by different respective states. But I believe we can harmonize and ensure that we have a law that is, uh, is viable. President of the Southeast Professional Women Association of Nigeria and Diaspora, Mwanganga Ibe, said they are at the National Assembly to raise awareness on the adoption laws. We are working out to build a skilled acquisition center in our headquarters in Enugu, we are young girls will be trained and developed. In the meantime, coalition of support groups from a number of states has called on senators, particularly from the southeast, to disregard any distraction from their constraints and continue with the discharge of their legislative duties. We are proudly saying that Andrew Bai is re re representing us. And we are saying on the issue of the certificates come that his certificates are there in the INEC. The coalition cautioned against unnecessary rivalry among legislators in the Southeast. From the National Assembly, Waziri Ziyan, NTA News. The current administration is determined to fulfill its promise of improving the well-being of Nigerians. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, gave the assurance when she presented a free three-bedroom bungalow to Mr. and Mrs. Udwehi, who recently gave birth to five babies. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has the report. Represented by the chairman, Federal Integrated Staff Housing Program, Fish, Yemi Adelakun, who conducted the father of the five babies around a three-bedroom house, the head of the civil service of the Federation said, the Fish Program is a success because of the unwavering support of President Muhammadu. Buhari. One that is a man of his word, a man of his integrity. Whatever he says, he believes in it and he will make sure he uh, delivers on his promises. And this is all we are seeing. Fish is a subset of the housing policy of President Mohamed Buhari and he has given all the support. We have been funded. This is just the beginning. We have just gone out now to see another 500 units of houses in this estate. We are going to look around for funds to make sure that some of our uh, uh, fish participants move in as soon as possible. Uh, it's a dedication to duty. It's a service that we render to the communities over the years, over 15 years of existence. There's no way one can define change better than what we have uh, seen in the sense that we are moving from a single room apalo to a three bedroom flat. Change has really happened to us as a family and we're very happy. So the family can now move into their new apartment from the National Hospital. <laughs> Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Encouraging participation of people living with disability in politics and governance formed part of the decisions of the International Republican Institute's Roundtable on Youth, Women and Leadership in Nigeria. The youths who are from all parts of the country 
converged on Abuja to share experiences on ways to mobilize their peers in order to fully participate in the development processes of the country. Dele Atumbi has this report. Nigeria no doubt has an impactful political history that makes her unique and the giant of Africa with her abundant human and material resources. The evolution of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration in 2015 has further deepened all inclusive democratic process in the country in which the human resource is immensely mobilized for a stakeholder scheme in governance. To further promote democratic culture in Nigeria, participants at the Youth and Women Leadership Conference advocate more participation of women and youth to continue to drive the political process. I would urge and solicit in every way I can that women are engaged because once a woman is engaged, the level of reach, you know, for whatever development purpose it is, is largely more successful than the men. If you do an assessment of Nigeria looking at women, you will see that there are numerous, there are millions of women who have the capacity and the skills to participate in the process. Also for the participants, encouraging people living with disabilities through the allotment of political positions at all tiers of government is the way to go to give them a sense of belonging. One thing we know also is that we are ambassadors of the country. We need, we need more participation in party politics. The conference makes a case for what is described as not too young to run an advocacy for more youth participation in ownership of political parties and leadership. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. The permanent secretary state house, Mr. Jalal Arabi, is not on suspension as erroneously reported. A statement by the Deputy Director of Information, State House, Abiodun Oladun Joye, said the Permanent Secretary is neither under probe nor a subject of any inquiry as alleged by an online medium. The statement dismissed the report of Mr. Rabi's suspension as untrue and spurious, noting that he is at his desk dutifully attending to important state matters and was at the Jumat prayer this afternoon at the State House with President Muhammad Buhari. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at any Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. A break is due now when we return. Companies that defraud government to foreign exchange under any guise would have their licenses revoked. We'll be back. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing coal and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. toilet now sure this gets just one it is clean but not perfect 10 better than my detergent and bleach impossible challenge try apex compared to bleach and detergent apex sticker formulation removes yellow stains times better giving you a sparkling clean toilet wow now you also take that perfect 10x challenge also available in 200 ml park for 200 naira only the inspector general of police ibrahim k idris npm mni in conjunction with national council of traditional rulers and leadership newspapers group invites all relevant stakeholders to the national security summit on farmers pastoral clashes, kidnapping, and other forms of violent crimes in Nigeria. Theme, forging partnerships for effective strategies to curb the menace of kidnapping, recurring farmers, pastoralist clashes, and criminality in Nigeria. Date, 11th and 12th May, 2017. Time, 
10 a.m. daily. Venue, International Conference Center, Abuja. Special guest of honor, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR. Guest of honor, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman B. Dambazao, retired. Minister of Interior. Special guest, the Thirsty State Governors, FCT Minister, Members National Assembly and Diplomatic Community. Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, Alhaji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakar III, Sultan of Sokoto, and Chairman, National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. Also to attend, Honorable Ministers, All Service Chiefs, Government Functionaries, Council of Traditional rulers amongst others. D.I.G.H.M. Dagala, Chairman Planning Committee announcer. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Members of the general public are invited to the flag of ceremony for the construction of road project across Bogoro Das, the Babelewa Federal Constituency of Bauchi State by Speaker House of Representatives Right Honorable Yakubu Dogara. Date is Saturday, 6th May 2017. Venue, Trudungu Das, Das Local Government Area of Bauchi State. Time, 11 a.m. Your Excellency, you have left indelible legacies through numerous projects that have impacted positively on the lives of the people and generations yet unborn will benefit from these developmental efforts. Come one, come all. Announcer, Ilya Habila, Chairman, Publicity and Protocol Committee. Whenever pain occurs, you want quick relief. Try new Nurofen Express. It goes to the source of pain and gets to work in under 15 minutes. That's why Nurofen Express delivers fast and effective relief. New Nurofen Express works at the source of pain fast. Being a mom is great, but when your child has a fever, you don't know what to do. I trust Nurofen for children to take care of my child's pain and fever. Effective relief you can trust. Your Excellency, Executive Governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Omar Ganduji, cordially invites members of the public to the turbinant ceremony of Right Honorable Al-Hassan Adu Dugwa, Chief Whip, House of Representatives, as Dalla Tunkenjiwa, to be conferred on him by Sari King Kenjiwa al Haji Yusuf Suleiman under the supervision of Sari King Kabin Arugungu al Haji Muhammad Umeira. Date Saturday 6th May 2017. Venue Amos Palace, Kenjiwa Kabi State. Time 2 p.m. Dignitaries expected include the host governor of Kabi State, Senator Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, Sakwata State Governor, Right Honorable Amin Waziri Tambual, and Katana State Governor, Right Honorable Aminu Bella Masani. Senator Usman Bayero Nafada. Announcer. From the south south to the northeast, southeast to the northwest, southwest to the north central, the future assured project and its component get involved is restoring hope to millions of Nigerian women and children. We are actually doing a lot on the future assured, the program of Her Excellency Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari. And I believe what we are doing so far is impacting positively on the lives of women and children in Nigeria, particularly those in the internally displaced camps across the nation. Get involved. Support the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Thanks for staying tuned to the Network News at 9 on the network service of the NTA. Companies that defraud government of Forex under any guise should have their licenses revoked. Their suggestion is coming from the Chairman Ad hoc Committee on Automobile on Access to Forex, Mkaila Kazim, who led other members on oversight visit to vehicle manufacturing plants in Anambra and Enugu states. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa has more. The committee in its findings over the period is the displacement of priority in the allocation of foreign exchange and concessions to indigenous companies. This is why there is the need for government to adopt a strict strategy in monitoring the functions and performance of companies and joint government facilitations. The committee's visit to indigenous vehicle manufacturing company in Newe, a number of states, was an eye-opener on the manufactured products and the quality of work done 
by indigenous reputable companies, which are legitimately the ones government targets its concessions to. Apart from the manufacturing of spare parts, the company runs a youth training institute and a tire manufacturing outfit, which now is bar bound due to what the company executives say, problem of foreign exchange and devaluation of the Naira. I've been around to different places where components are made, but it's really shocking when we go down here, this is the tire section. And you know tires, when it comes to car, is a very important part of, it's a very important part of the car. Chairman of the vehicle manufacturing plant enumerated some of the challenges confronting business in Nigeria. My shut down uh, this tire factory because of um, situation today, the learning capital for the factory is much that um, I cannot be able to carry all of them together. The committee is also expected to visit other industries in Lagos, Kano, and Kaduna states. Rabbi Musa, NTA News. It is estimated that Nigeria loses about 2,300 children under five and 145 women of childbearing age every day. A situation Nigerian nurses and midwives say underscores the need for government at all levels to invest more in the midwifery scheme in order to tackle this disturbing phenomenon. This was at a media conference in Abuja to commemorate the 2017 International Day of Midwives. Chukunonso Wambuizi has the report. Skilled attendance at the point of delivery is one health experts say is integral to reversing Nigeria's high child and maternal mortality. Who else are better positioned for this but nurses and midwives? This is by virtue of their training. As they join their counterparts globally to mark this year's International Day of Midwives with the team, midwives, mothers and families, partners for life, they advocate improved working conditions for effective and efficient health care delivery. Why Midwives Day and this much of celebration is because of the neglect on the part of the services and underrating the importance of midwifery services that has plunged Nigeria into high maternal mortality rate. Childhood mortality and maternal mortality are higher in rural areas than in urban areas. These deaths can be further lessened and prevented if the government takes some precautions and safety measures by ensuring that midwives trained to carry out these duties are employed. The International Day of Midwives is a day set aside by the International Confederation of Midwives to create more awareness on the important roles midwives play in the transition of human life from the womb to life. Chukunon Songwabweze, NTN News. And still on the celebration of the day, as Nigeria joins the rest of the world to celebrate International Day of Midwives, the wife of the president of the Senate, Tony Saraki, says the country should respect midwives in the nursing profession and call them commensurate position in the health sector. This was at a news briefing to mark the day in Abuja. Ifani Ezumba has the report. Wife of the President of the Senate, while sharing in the vision of the International Confederation of Midwives, stressed that in harnessing their powers within the health system, the nation will automatically be investing in triple advantage. We believe that it is essential for mothers and women to have a safe, secure care outside the family, as life with a newborn understands their community and culture outside the family. And the most trusted confidant for that mother is a midwife. As part of activities to mark the International Day of the Midwife, Mrs. Saraki, who is the Global Goodwill Ambassador of the International Confederation of Midwives, said the Wellbeing Foundation will be supporting Midwives of Nigeria, Association of Nurses, in a relief outreach mission to internally displaced persons at Kuchingoro Settlement in Abuja, while their focus will be improving the standard of Nigeria's nursing midwifery educational institutions. In Abuja, Ifani Izumba continues. Edo state government has promised to continue to support humanitarian efforts towards the well-being of IDPs in Benin, pending their resettlement. Governor Godwin Obaseki made a promise while receiving members of the National Logistics Committee who were in the state to present relief materials to IDPs at the Benin camp. Correspondent Shegun Lawole has the report. 
In the past, smuggled items like rice, vegetable oil, and second-hand clothing were destroyed by the Nigerian customs. These items are now being put to good use by IDPs, as directed by President Muhammadu Buhari, a gesture appreciated by the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseke. Even though we do not believe it's a long-term solution, but at least for now, let us keep settled and resettled Subsequently, the over 2,000 IDPs in the Benin home for the needy, now turned IDP camp, were excited to receive fresh items like rice, totaling 7,312 bags, 1,200 jerry cans of vegetable oil, bills of second-hand clothing, and soaps. Well, these are Nigerians who uh, are suffering. We, as Ni fellow Nigerians and as Christians, for Christ's sake, can of fold our hands and see our, our brothers and sisters you know, suffering and not stretching our hands of love to, to help them. These items were facilitated through the Nigerian Customs Warehouse as the third phase of the distribution of items ended. Share Golawale, NTN News. New product launch and an annual general meeting. Let's get more business news as we join Ademola in NTA Lagos Network Center. Hello, Ademola. It's over to you. Thank you, Phil. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Smartphone manufacturing company Samsung Electronics Company Limited has officially launched into the Nigerian into the Nigerian telecommunications market, the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus phone, the company's latest flagship phones. Tunes Aiki, who was at the launching ceremony in Lagos, reports that some Nigerian celebrities and Samsung ambassadors were on ground to enlighten smartphone users on why they need these phones. Management of Samsung Electronics described the new phones as Infinity Display because they possess some innovative features never before seen in digital technology. The two devices with screen measuring 5.8 inches and 6.2 inches respectively have a resolution of 2,960 by 1,440 pieces. The Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus have a fingerprint sensor and a facial unlock feature as part of its security models. We have taken the proven technology and the formula of creating the devices and ecosystem. Now this comes with the iris scanner, which can be the... Those other ones are secure, but with the iris scanner, it's the most secure. No two people have the same iris. Composing an email to the person. So maybe the person is giving you an information on the chat, and you are replicating that information in the email. So that way you don't have to wait to finish the chat conversation before you open the email and now start sending the email. Some Nigerian celebrities who graced the launch also took time to describe the devices as amazing. It really isn't a, a more impressive phone to own in the world. It's a phone that you don't want to put in your hand. You always want to have it in your hand like this. The event was also used to display some other devices by Samsung Electronics in Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. The National Salt Company of Nigeria, NASCON Allied Industries PLC, a leading refinery and distributor of household food processing and industrial salt has recorded a turnover of more than 18 billion naira, an increase of over 16 billion naira in the previous year. The chairperson of the company, Yemisi Ayeni, disclosed this to shareholders at the 2017 annual general meeting of the company in Lagos. Ken Igbeluhe completes the story. The 2017 annual general meeting provided an opportunity for the company's board of directors to present the financial statement to shareholders for the year under review. The chairperson, NASCOM Allied Industry PSC, said for the financial year ended 31st December 2016, the company recorded a turnover of more than 18 billion naira, representing 13% increase against the previous year. The profit after tax also increased by 15% from 2.11 billion naira in 2015 to 2.42 billion naira 
in 2017. It was just having a board and a management team and obviously the staff of the company prepared to continue working hard to stick with the strategy, to stick with the vision. Our strategy has been well defined moving forward and I think it's really on the focus on that strategy and making sure we implement that over the next couple of years. We're purchasing a new um, refinery for our salt and we're also looking at innovation. Shareholders also unanimously approved the board recommendation that the payment of a dividend of 70 cobo per ordinary share of 50 cobo each be paid to shareholders. Their company is a growing company and is serving the needs of many Nigerians. By award winning next year, they will add bonus. The company management says distribution and route to market efficiency of Dangote Salt and Danku Seasoning brands will continue to remain a key focus area to drive growth for NASCON Allied Industries PSC in Lagos. Ken Ibeluge, NTA News. And now to business news. Economic experts shed light on the benefits of full budget implementation and prefer solutions to low productivity by the nation's refineries. Details in our business news segment with Viera Chimoba. Welcome to business news segment. I am Viera Chimoba. The federal government's quest to address the economic recession and record meaningful growth in gross domestic product is achievable only when the 2017 federal budget is fully implemented by the executive and monitored through sustained oversight functions by the members of the legislature. Economic experts made this known at the budget implementation conference which has ended in Lagos. If you plan the budget, you approve and you implement, there is no audit, there is no constructive uh, oversight function, you will know exactly what has been done. And that's why the issue of transparency comes in and discipline. The auditing function and oversight functions are poorly performed. The gathering also deliberated on the need to add value to the nation's crude oil with a view to achieving the 2017 budget revenue projection of 1.99 trillion naira from the oil sector not even because of the recent OPEC uh, intervention that at least we can see the prices hovering about 40, 50, the story would have been so bad. There are other non-oil products that can be looked into. People are making money from all these, these things. You know, bring in a regulatory framework. We can we, we, we harness it. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. You're still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news continues. Stay with us. What makes a ninja mom powerful? I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's One Cap Four. To fight germs, my family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's One Cap Four to disinfect surfaces and clothes. I trust the power of Dettol's One Cap Four for bathing. The power of Dettol's One Cap Four protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be a powerful ninja mom with Dettol. What happened? It was mosquito. Oh! Oh! Daddy, here! What's happening here? Mama, mosquito! I sprayed, but the mosquitoes aren't dying. <laughs> no longer, because I've bought Motain Power Guard, which kills 100% mosquitoes. Motain Power Guard kills 100% mosquitoes. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians. Due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image on our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues from experts in the sports sector, offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight and insight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith of the sports parliament. 
benefits that accrue in school sports. It is the bedrock of any nation. A few Nigerians wanted the status quo to continue. So um, I don't think we should put all Nigerians and say Nigerians don't follow the trend because the smart ones, we are following the trend. The National Sports Lottery Fund shrouded in secrecy. The fact that uh, the Super Eagles played an NTA, not only NTA, no Nigerian broadcaster, in fact, no broadcaster anywhere in the world from our records was able to uh, bring that match. It's a matter of concern. Issa Hayatu was president for 29 years. He lost the election in Addis. And that's it. He's gone. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions. Showing live on the NTA, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Keep a day with parliamentarians. Who has had it? Thanks for still being there. In line with the federal government's drive to diversify the economy, make it more vibrant and viable for the national, the National Council for Art and Culture has signed a 300 million naira memorandum of understanding with the Bank of Industry to grow the sector for increased contribution to the nation's gross domestic product. Olajide Belu reports. There is a growing international interest in the potentials of the cultural and creative industries to drive sustainable development and create inclusive job opportunities. The Nigerian Gross Domestic Product GDP report by the National Bureau of Statistics indicates that the arts and entertainment industry experienced a growth of 1.86% to 12.81% in the third quarter of 2016, contributing 54 billion naira to the country's GDP. In view of this, a new vista has opened for the art and culture sector in Nigeria with a 300 million naira memorandum of understanding signed by the National Council for Arts and Culture and the Bank of Industry. This morning is going to touch so many lives. We have a bunch of great Nigerians and Bauchi blind men who produce one of the best, best bags. All they needed is something small. Now, BOI has made way for us to go there with our strength, with our power, and everything. We'll be able to organize Nigerians who are involved in these businesses and those who want to go into the handcraft business. The MOU provides for jointly building their capacities, helping them to organize their businesses. The Rector General, National Council for Arts and Culture, thereafter officially handed over the MOU to the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, in Abuja, Olajide Bello, NTA News. The 23rd Combined Convocation of the Federal Polytechnic Ida Kogi State has held with a charge to the graduates to be self-reliant, to meet up with the growing technical and industrial needs of the people the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, represented by the Executive Secretary of the National Board for Technical Education, Dr. Adamu Kazari, gave the charge at the ceremony. Correspondent Ajibola Christopher has the details. The 23rd Joint Convocation Ceremony of the Federal Polytechnic IDA was for 2006, 2007, 2015, and 2016 academic section. Rector Federal Polytechnic IDA Matthew Apatala says the institution established in 1977 has provided full-time classes and training of students in technology, sciences, commerce, and management. The trainings you receive in this polytechnic are enough to make you solutions rather than problems to yourself and your immediate environment. Minister for Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, represented by the Executive Secretary, National Board for Technical Education, says the federal government is committed to rapid development of the education sector with popular emphasis on technical and vocational education. Kogi State Governor, represented by his deputy, Simon Achuba, urged the graduate to be useful to themselves and their immediate communities. Fellowship award was conferred to six Nigerians in recognition of their contributions towards technological development and industrialization of the country. I must appreciate the efforts that IDA Polytechnic has been doing on such From the Federal Polytechnic, IDA, 
Ajibola Christopher, NTN News. Internally displaced persons in Borno State are getting farm implements to boost agriculture. Let's get details from Mohammed in NTA Medjugorje Network Center. Hello, Mohammed. Take it away. Hello, Phil. Thank you and welcome to Medjugorje. In line with the presidential directive to give the Northeast special consideration, Borno State has gotten additional 1,200 slots in the NPower program of the federal government. Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Job Creation and Youth Empowerment, Afolabi Imokedi, made this known when he led the NPOWER monitoring team on a visit to Governor Kashi Shatima at the government house. Muhammad Goni reports. Mr. Afolabi Imokedi said the team was in the state to monitor the activities of the NPOWER program of the federal government designed to help unemployed youth in the country. He said 3,502 have been successfully screened out of the 4,228 NPOWER volunteers in the state, with 37 disqualified for irregularities and about 700 absentees. The senior special assistant added that effort is being made to replace those disqualified and the absentees. The specifically said that we must give special consideration to the parties, and not only was special consideration of additional 4,800 given to the parties, but we were the largest. We got 1,200. Governor Kashim Shetima lauded the NPOWER program, saying it will go a long way in solving the challenges of youth unemployment in the country. The NPOWER program will play a very, very vital role towards rekindling hope for a better tomorrow in our youth. The governor assured that 90% of the NPOWER beneficiaries in the state will be posted to teach in schools and urged the federal government to extend the school feeding to all the local government across the state. In Maiduguri, Mamot Goni, NTA News. In another development, Borno State Government, in conjunction with Japanese government and UNDP, have presented agricultural implements and bulls to farmers in general local government as part of the resettlement effort. Governor Kashim Shatima presented the items to the beneficiaries at the outskirts of Gongolom Village of general local government area of Borno State. Again, Mohamed Goni has more. Farming communities such as Zabarmari and Gongolom supply most of the fruits and the vegetables consumed within the metropolis and beyond even in the face of the security challenges. The distribution of the farm implements will strengthen the capacity of the farmers in the area and add value to their yield. Plugging up the distribution, Governor Kashim Shetima charged the beneficiaries not to sell the items and the bulls given to them, assuring that the state government will drill 30 wash boreholes to provide sufficient water for irrigation and the domestic needs. The governor used the opportunity to call on the farmers to get their permanent voters cut Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Professor Babagana Umara said, each of the 255 beneficiaries are to be given 10 kg back each of onion and the pepper seeds. Apart from this also, we are also distributing 150 bulls and 150 cows each to 150 beneficiaries in Borno State. Chairman of Farmers Association of the area, Thank Borno State Government and the Ministry of Reconstruction and Resettlement for the gesture, describing it as unprecedented. In Maiduguri, Mamut Goni, NTA News. That does it from Maiduguri. Back to Phil in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you, Mohammed. Muslim faithful have been enjoined to take advantage of worship as devotional act to glorify Allah in efforts to commit themselves to his service. Imam Abdul Ahmed said this in a sermon at Anu Jumat Mosque, Wuse to Abuja. Societal challenges and problems, Imam Abdul Ahmed observed that seeking divine intervention is important in overcoming challenges of life. In doing so, the devotional act of Tasbih, which glorifies Allah, also seeks his blessings and favor, hence the need for Muslims to make the act a daily habit. To say subhanallah, or subhanallah wa bihamdi, we uh, declare that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fit to protect us, to give us pro uh, provision. And also sub um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa enjoined us to always say that a hundred times at the beginning of the day and a hundred times at the beginning of the night. It's very, very important. Worshippers inspired by the message promised to make use of lessons learned. It's a shortcut to get a lot of blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we 
be a very good Muslims, obedient, and uh, we should always keep at the back of our mind that here is one day we'll uh, meet our almighty God. Prayers were offered for peace and social economic well-being of the country. In Abuja, I am Musa Abu Bakar, NT News. Ramadan Lecture Committee visits heads of media establishments. Let's join Suleiman in Kaduna Network Center for details. Thank you very much, Phil, and welcome. Directors General NTA, FRCN, and the Voice of Nigeria have commended the organizers of the annual Ramadan Lecture for choosing topics that impact positively on the lives of the people in the society. They stated this when the organizing committee visited them to keep them abreast on the forthcoming Ramadan lecture in Kaduna. Brian Belogunda has the details. Led by the chairman of the committee, Muhammad Abu Bakr, the committee was at the headquarters of the media organizations in Abuja, in line with the tradition of keeping them informed. Anytime the annual event in Tisaf, Muhammad Abu Bakr noted that the lecture was inherited in 2005 to address societal ills. We feel being the major promoters of what we are doing, they deserve to be updated. The chief executives visited described the topic as apt, considering the importance of charity to the needy. To be always supportive of all ventures that are aimed at, you know, uplifting you know, uh, the, the society. It's one of the things that I think we can also give back to the society. Charity is a fundamental structure that gives back to welfare and security of the people. The committee also visited the Director General of National Information Technology Development Agency, Dr. Isa Alipantami, who will be the guest lecturer. I feel honored and humbled as well for the opportunity to come and present the lecture. The lecture, as usual, will be transmitted live in Kaduna, Ibrahim Belogunda, NTA News. The national leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has urged people of southern Kaduna not to despair, even in the face of difficulty. President of the association, Reverend Samson Supo Ayokule, who led the team, stated this while delivering relief materials worth 8 million naira to internally displaced persons in the area. Lois Anthony sent in the details. Khan president noted that when one part of the body is affected, the whole body suffers the pain while reiterating the association's efforts in bringing peace to Southern Kaduna. Reverend Ayokule called on the Kaduna state government to reopen closed tertiary institutions and the federal government to investigate and bring to book perpetrators of the attacks. Much more to the government to please rehabilitate all the properties that have been vandalized. Secretary Khan, Kaduna State Chapter, Reverend Sunday Ibrahim, thanked the national body for the show of concern and called on government to put in place measures that will enable the people of Southern Kaduna, who are predominantly farmers, embark on farming activities as the rainy season sets in. They have also shown to us that uh, what we are going through is not just us as a, as a people. A committee has already been set up for the distribution of the relief materials. And with that report, it's back to you, Phil, for more on the network news. Thank you. Another break is due now. We will be back shortly. Strategy by the Buhari Administration for Food Security for Nigeria in top gear. But saboteurs of the economy still in their nefarious act of smuggling foreign rice into the country. Why and how this dastardly act persists and the way to combat the situation. On NTA Weekend File, this Saturday, 6th of May, 2017, at 9 p.m. Join us. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national 
regional and international collaborations, cutting edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. Nadia's impact upon everything we do, including what we drink, the food we eat, the food we buy, the important organ to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefit and success that they need to record. Let us support NAFDAQ to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. It's Time for sports update now, and Adeola Omokivie is our guide. School luminary and proprietor Afeba Balola University at Doekiti, Are Afeba Balola, has re emphasized the need for philanthropists and corporate organizations to improve the level of funding sports development programs in order to ease the burden on federal, state, and local governments. Kehinde Lamidi reports that the octogenarian disclosed this while pledging to build an Olympic-sized swimming pool in Ekiti State as part of efforts to develop the sport. I believe I can, and I'm, I know we will. And we both agree that we are going to sponsor people who, who will train our students from youth and possibly become giants. Manchester United manager Jose Mourinho insists he will rest key squad players.